Hello and welcome to the Night Rider Podcast. My name is Sean D. Knight and this is a show that will focus on the art of writing, my journey to become an author through independent publishing, and discussions about my current writing project. It is my hope that this podcast will help me to further my writing and that you will join me on this journey as I attempt to write some magic and that this podcast will inspire you to write and publish your own story. So let us go on this journey together. It is the 18th of August, 2018, as of this recording, and I'm slowly falling back into a routine. I was able to get a little bit of writing done for my current work in progress by writing 300 words, but it is still under 43,000 words total. It is not much, but I feel better about having written something rather than nothing, though I had hoped that the weekend would have provided me the opportunity to get more than that done. Sadly, life did not see it that way for me. I have also been writing a number of blog posts as I commute to work and will be posting them up sometime next week, so I have not been too idle when it comes to writing. Now originally, this podcast episode was going to be about creating dialogue, but I found myself spending quite a bit of time thinking about a particular article that talked about physical book sales. So I've decided to push back the topic of creating dialogue to episode 14 where I'll share my personal method for trying to create dialogue unique to a character and share some examples from Forget Me Not Father, which is my current work in progress. So let us move on to this subject. For those of you who have been listening to the podcast since it started, you will recall that in a couple of previous episodes, I talked about a couple of recent news articles in regards to how book sales were up, but the average income for a full-time author was drastically down. Well, this week I stumbled upon an article regarding physical sales over at strategybusiness.com written by Bob Woods talking about how physical books are the only physical form of entertainment that continues to see a rise in sale numbers. While physical copies of movies and TV shows, music and video games continue to decline, books are the only thing that has not seen a loss in sales. While the aforementioned entertainment mediums are expected to see a continued decline of sales going into double-digit percentages, books, according to PwC's Global Entertainment and Media Outlook for 2018 through 2022, states that the physical sales of books will grow by a modest 1% per year. PwC goes on to say that by 2022, consumers will have spent $50.3 billion globally on both physical and audio forms of books, up from $47.8 billion in 2017. The Association of American Publishers released a report back in May stating that printed books, especially hardbacks, are still a source of growth for the company's 1,200 publishers. According to AAP's monthly stats shot, the revenue for trade books increased by $96 million, which is 1.3% to $7.6 billion from 2016 to 2017. The AAP attributes this increase in sales to a 3% increase in the adult books category, which accounts for more than 65% of overall trade book revenue. So that gives you an idea of which market you guys should hit if you're looking to make money as an author. Meanwhile, ebook sales appear to have hit its plateau. According to the AAP, ebook sales in 2017 declined for a third year in a row from $1.16 billion to $1.1 billion since 2016. It's a 4.7% drop, but I think this is a very interesting thing for self-publishing authors to know. Now, the article goes on to explain what could be the reasons for why the sales of physical books continue to grow while other physical entertainment mediums decline. According to the AAP, there are several factors that could attribute to the ever-increasing growth of physical book sales. One reason, according to AAP Director of Communications Marissa Bluestone, is that people still love printed books who said, quote, People love print books for a few reasons. The feel of the paper in their hands, the smell of the books displaying a library in their homes, end quote. Personally, I know that I love holding a book in my hands, and I feel a sense of pride having my books displayed on the shelf where people can see what I've read or what I am going to read. I find it also helps to start up conversations when I have guests in the house when they are browsing my shelves and looking at the various genres and topics displayed there. Another reason why consumers still prefer physical copies, according to Publishers Weekly Editorial Director Jim Milliot, it is because of screen fatigue and goes on to say, quote, People looking at screens all day at the office don't want to come home and look at another screen. They're perfectly happy to read a good old-fashioned book, end quote. 
Here's a reason that I can certainly agree with, since as a freelance writer and aspiring author, my eyes start to feel the strain of staring at a monitor all day, every day. To help with the strain and screen fatigue, I have a couple pairs of glasses that I'll sometimes wear. One is yellow tinted and another is a pair of black shades, depending on how strained my eyes feel. But there are days that I cannot even stare at a screen because I will wake up and my eyes will already be suffering from screen fatigue. Those days, I just sit down with pen and paper to write or pick up a book to read. However, I have been making sure to take breaks from writing on my PC. Whether it is to go cook a meal, read a book for 15 to 30 minutes, or go for a walk while listening to a podcast. I try to take breaks from staring at my monitor whenever I can. Another factor for the ever-increasing sales of physical copies would be demographics. Regarding demographics, PwC audit partner James DuPont said, quote, It's a pretty well-established fact that books skew to an older demographic, end quote. According to the article, DuPont goes on to say that baby boomers tend to stay in the sweet spot, though that isn't explained any further about what is or constitutes the sweet spot in this case. But I did find it interesting that DuPont also said that the publishing industry has been buoyed by a younger demographic that will purchase books that have blockbuster movies tied to them such as Harry Potter and The Hunger Games. The final factor that was discussed in the article was the business model. When it comes to movies, TV shows, and music, there are multiple business models that help to drive the price down. Digital copies eventually become cheaper than their physical counterparts, while subscription-based services allow consumers to binge watch or listen to their heart's content, thanks to services such as Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, for example, costs $119 a year and... Because of it, you have unlimited access to movies, music, and the platform's own original programming. It is certainly a much better alternative than spending $10 to $30 for a Blu-ray copy of one movie. But when it comes to ebooks, such a price discrepancy does not really exist. Prices between physical and digital copies of books are almost the same with the digital version coming out just a little cheaper. For example, a paperback version of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone would cost anywhere from $10 to $12, while the digital version goes for about $8.99. Personally, I've never purchased a digital version of a book for more than $5, and even then, only because it was a sale or the book's word count justified me spending that much. However, and here's where I digress from the article, if I'm going to spend that much money on a digital copy, then I would rather spend it on the physical version. You see, when it comes to the digital version of anything, there's a chance that it could be taken away from you. There have been cases in other mediums where a company has removed a song, an album, a video game from someone's library for various reasons. Not only that, but what happens if your account is suddenly banned or removed? These things do happen. Of course, in the same vein, a fire could wipe out your entire library, or a family member or friend throw away a book. But a physical copy is like an investment. Not only does it feel good to hold a book in your hand, but having it displayed on your shelf helps to give your house, apartment, room a living look. Having a bookcase or shelves filled with books is something to be proud of because its display immediately conveys something to you and to people who visit your home. On top of that, you can resell your books to recuperate what you have spent on it. Or if you're someone who tends to invest in an author at the start of their career, find yourself in possession of valuable books. Which brings us to the article's final reason for why sales of physical copies continue to rise. The continued existence of bookstores. While other businesses such as Blockbuster have been wiped out because of services such as Netflix and Hulu and other establishments like Virgin Records are shrinking because of digital music being cheaper, bookstores are still around. Sure, Borders no longer exists and Barnes & Noble continues to flounder while trying to adapt to the digital landscape still, but independent booksellers seem to be picking up the slack. There has been a 35% increase in the number of independent booksellers from 1,651 to 2,227 between 2019 and 2015, according to Harvard Business School professor Ryan Raffaelli. This is not a trend that has been seen when it comes to music store chains, for example. But I think there is another factor for why physical book sales continue to increase rather than decrease. The lack of digital right management, also known as DRM. Suffice to say, it is pretty hard to slap on some form of DRM to a book than, say, a video game. As I said earlier, books can retain some value. A factor that can no longer be said of video games, which, when buying a physical copy, no longer have any resale value once opened. 
Yet I cannot help but wonder if the sale of physical copies would continue to rise if the digital counterparts were sold at a much cheaper price. I look at self-publishing, which continues to grow at an ever-expanding rate, where the price of a good book is much cheaper than what is being sold by the publishers. But what do you think? I would love to hear what you have to say about that article and my own opinions. And if you would like to share your own method on how you create dialogue for episode 14, be sure to let me know by Tuesday, August 21st. When it comes to authors, not everyone's method is the same. So thank you for listening to the Knight Rider Podcast. I hope you have enjoyed this show, and if you would like to learn more about the current project or reach out to me, then you can follow me on Twitter at Shawnee Knight, use the hashtag Knight Writer, or chat with me on Facebook or Instagram. If you're looking for a community of aspiring writers and enthusiasts, then join the Knight Writer community on Discord. I'll provide links in the description of this podcast. If you're listening to this on Anchor, please give the episode a like. And for those listening on iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. While YouTube viewers, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye, and let's write some magic.